in this section we will uh, have an overview of the power system reliability there has been a considerable work done in the area of power system reliability but if you look at it uh, there are two dimensions in which you can classify all that work uh, one of the dimensions is the system coverage which means that what part of the power system is being modeled and analyzed for reliability the second dimension is the solution approaches that given that we have decided that which area of our system is our focus what kind of models are we going to use and what kind of mathematical methods are employed for the solution <coughs> now in terms of the system coverage there are basically three levels at which most of the work has been done the first level is what is sometimes called the hierarchical level 1 HL1 it's also called the generating capacity reliability evaluation the basic objective in the generating capacity reliability evaluation is to see that how much capacity we should have so that the load can be or the demand can be served with a certain level of probability the generating capacity reliability or the hierarchical level one can be subdivided into two parts one is the so-called single area reliability evaluation in the single area reliability evaluation we assume that the comparison is between the generation and load and the transmission is assumed to be capable of transporting power from generation to load so conceptually we can say that we are assuming that all the generation is connected to a single bus and all the load is also connected with a single bus The next higher level we call the multi-area reliability. It is also called the reliability of the interconnected power systems. In this, the model looks something like this. That in each area, basically, we assume that the load and generation are connected to the same bus but between the areas we have the tie line capacities now whereas it may look like that the transmission constraints within the area are being ignored but in actual practice the intra area transmission constraints are indirectly modeled when we are trying to compute the capacity of these tie lines because the capacities of these tie lines are found by performing the power flow calculations 
and write by following the power, cal power flow calculations to determine the transmission capacities between the areas, the transmission constraints within the area do get considered. <clears throat> the next level is what we call the composite system reliability evaluation or hierarchical level 2. In this, the generation and the transmission at the bulk transmission level are both considered. And in this, the constraints imposed by the capacity of the transmission lines as well as the impedance of the transmission lines are considered. Now, voltage constraints <coughs> may also be considered depending upon the models used. The third level is the distribution system reliability. So, the distribution systems look something like this. They are connected to a substation and the substation is be, being fed from being fed from one of the buses of the uh, composite system. It will be very difficult, if not impossible, to consider the distribution, transmission, generation, everything together. So what we do is that we try to find the reliability indices of the substation. And knowing those reliability indices, then we can compute the reliability indices of the uh, distribution system. How about now the solution approaches? The solution approaches can be categorized into maybe three or four broad categories. One of the approaches is the what we call the analytical methods. In the analytical methods, we try to form, we try to use either the closed form solutions or the solutions where the, there is a set of equations underlying the solution. And these are used mostly in the single area, multi area, and distribution system models. The Monte Carlo simulation, which is very popular, is used mostly in the multi-area and the composite system models. Because for the single area models, there is there is no point in using the Monte Carlo simulation. Now recently a lot of work has been done on using the intelligent systems for the intelligent search. So these have been used in two ways. One is that how to improve the efficiency of the Monte Carlo simulation by using the intelligent search. And the second is as a by using as an alternative to Monte Carlo simulation. There is also a class of methods which we call the hybrid methods because all methods have their own strengths and weaknesses. In the hybrid methods, we try to combine the methods to tap the strengths. A general schematic diagram for the reliability analysis 
can be given as follows. We start with the system. The system have generators, the system have transmission lines, the system has loads, and so on. So using this information, we, you, we develop models for the units and also the system models. And then to, we also have the operating strategies. So all these are fed to develop what we call a state space. So we select a state from the state space. Then we evaluate the state to see that whether in this state we can serve the load or the load has to be curtailed. So if there is a load curtailment, then if there is no load curtailment, then it's a success state. If there is a load curtailment, then there is a failure state. And this information is fed into the reliability indices calculation. Then you go back again, start this process, and keep on doing this until you get a reasonable level of convergence. Now you can see that the models, of course, they differ from each other depending upon the intended application. When we are talking about the single area studies, the models are fairly simple. But if you want to include the operating considerations, they can become more complex complex or complicated. <clears throat> For multi-area studies, the system models are more complex than the single-area studies because you have to consider now the tie line constraints. <coughs> now presently, the composite system reliability evaluation is perhaps the most comprehensive model. At this stage of the evaluation, that is the composite system reliability evaluations, the issues like the impact of malfunctions or protective relays or the impact of post fault events are generally excluded. But when you include them, then the models can become even more complex. Also, the load is assumed to be forecast with a certain level of uncertainty, but its responsiveness to the market conditions and the type of generation available is generally not modeled in detail. Now, in terms of the state identification and selection, it will be clear that it's impossible to analyze all the possible states of the system because the number of states can run into millions and billions. Now, the so this is what is called the curse of dimensionality. As the state space explodes exponentially with the number of the components. Now in the analytical methods, we try to meet the challenge of dimensionality by several ways. One of them is state matching you try to merge certain states into 
what we call the superstates. You can also truncate the low probability states and then you can also use techniques like implicit animation. Now, in the Monte Carlo simulation, of course, this challenge is met by sampling. So you do not consider all the states, but you sample the states and try to draw the conclusions or the inference from these sample states. Now, recently, the intelligence search techniques are also emerging and uh, here the idea is to focus on identifying the dominant failure states. <clears throat> In the state evaluation, when we have a state, To decide that whether in this state we can meet the load or not depends upon that at which level the calculations are being made. For the single area studies, this may be simple that you can compare the generation and load and uh, say, okay, are we able to satisfy the load or not? So this is, this is really a process of simple addition or subtraction. But when we want to consider the multi-area liability evaluation or the composite system liability evaluation, then you have to perform some kind of a network flow model, network flow calculations, the simplest of which is the transportation model. And the, more completer and the computer ones are DC or AC power flow. Now, of course, AC power flow is more time consuming than the DC power flow. So, for most of the liability studies, for the multi area and even for the composite system level, uh, the DC power flow is the one which is most commonly used. Also, AC power flow can also be used. <coughs> now, all that information, of course, from the previous steps is used to estimate or calculate the liability indices. <coughs> 